You throw over $1,000 a month into local wishing wells. Of course, you idiot, because I'm wishing for more money. This is the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenberger and Bart Steinler. All right, welcome back to the Keeping Your Money Show. Jamie Westenberger joined, as always, by Bart Steinler. We've been talking about, all right, you made the decision that you need a financial advisor. Now let's walk through the steps of making sure you find the right one. If you miss any part of the show, you can always find it on our website. Just go to keepingyourmoney.com. You can also find it on all our podcast partners, iTunes, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. If you ever want to reach out to us, we love to take messages, phone calls, emails. They're all available to you. You can shoot us a message through Facebook or Twitter. Just go to those and search for the Keeping Your Money. Or, of course, you can email us, info at keepingyourmoney.com. Or give us a call, 888-98-MONEY is the number, 888-986-6639. We talk about independence a lot. Right. Um, we celebrate 4th of July. We're so into it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot of times... If you're not in the financial industry, it may be difficult for you to kind of understand what does that mean, right? Because there are companies out there that hold themselves out as like a DBA that might be different than what the actual kind of parent company is. Right. Um, So you, you need to do a little homework. But why is independence so important? This is why I think it's important. And I'm going to tell you right now. It's important in insurance. It's important in investments. Um, It's it's just you don't want someone who's steering you to only one of your possible options. And a perfect example of that is if you were out looking to buy a home, this is coming from the Kiplinger's article I grabbed, and I love the analogy, and you, you hired a realtor, you would not want a realtor that only shows you homes they're selling. Right, right. That they have the listing for. Right. So, so you need a four bedroom, two bath with a finished basement and a pool. They don't have one of those, so they take you, show you a three bedroom, one bath with a small yard. You couldn't even put a pool in. You'd be like, "Uh, what is this? Well, it's a nice house. It's a great deal, cheaper than a lot of the other houses out there, but it doesn't have anything that you're looking for, yeah. right? Yeah. And soon you would be asking yourself, like. Why did we hire this realtor? You know, right? Why am I dealing with a guy who's not listening to what I'm telling him? What my needs are exactly. So, if you think about working with a financial advisor the same way, you want someone who is independent, who can look at all the houses that are available out there. Right? Mm-hmm. There are two very different types of financial people that can come into your life. There are captive. And they're independent. Now, we're going to ignore, for the sake of this segment, the people who aren't even licensed. We'll ignore the life insurance agent and that type of person. Let's just concentrate on the people on whether they're independent or they're captive. And along the captive lines, there's also some differentiation there. There's different levels of being captive, right? So, for instance, the guy you're talking to or the gal you're talking to, maybe that's at your bank, all right? Mm-hmm. They're captive. They work for the bank. Uh, they're probably less captive than the guy whose business card has the name of the company that also is the name of the investment that you're working with, right? Yes. So you go into XYZ Bank, they're maybe not going to have as many options and opportunities and things they can show you and do for you as a truly independent financial advisor will, but they're definitely a better option than the guy who can only sell you his company's product Mm -hmm. or at a minimum is highly encouraged to sell his company's product. Right, right. There's also a variation of that too where um, the company he works for has a relationship with a certain group of fund companies. Sure. And then you'll, you'll see that you know, all of the portfolios that they put together will be heavily weighted towards these companies. And it's not because that those companies are in your best interest. And whenever you see that, whenever you're taking a look at your statement and, and all, of the, uh, all the different positions in your statement are coming from one or maybe one or two different companies, you gotta, it, it, has to, it has to be a red flag because in, in the real world, not, there are not very many fund companies 
fund companies, I'm saying fund, fund companies that excel in each particular part of a portfolio. Mm-hmm. So if you're seeing one or two companies there, then that should be um, that should be a red flag for you that maybe you should be getting a second opinion. And realize, just like we talked about designations earlier in the show, mm-hmm. just because somebody has designations that does not automatically make them independent. Right. A captive advisor can be a number of different designations. So that doesn't change whether they're captive or not. The, the, the biggest thing that you need to look at is what is the financial incentive of how your advisor is being paid? If there are, you know, and I would just be blunt. I'd, I'd ask them straight up, you know, right. do you receive bonuses? Do you receive higher payouts? Do you get a higher commission or fee for selling any type of product that you've proposed to me today versus a different type of product. You know, why is what you're showing me what you would recommend? If this is the growth fund you're recommending, why this one? Why is this one better than all these other ones that are available? Explain it to me. You right. know, they should be able to succinctly explain why that's the case, you know. And I think a lot of times too, there's some out there that are probably pretty obvious to people. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's never our intention on this show to talk badly about other companies. So we're never going to name companies. But I think you can probably figure it out without trying too hard. But it's not even just always the big, big companies. Um, It's not always the ones you might think of off the top of your head. Because little offices can exist that are still affiliated with those companies. So make sure you're reading the fine print. On the back of someone's card, does it say that the company is an affiliate of... And one of those national companies that off the top of your head, you think, "Mm, I'll bet they're captive. So I could be Bob Jones Financial. No offense to any real Bob Jones out there. This is totally fictional. Um, But I could still be affiliated with a national proprietary based company. I'm just simply utilizing a name to seem a little bit more independent. You got to kind of dig under the surface a little bit to make sure you're really, truly getting independence. I'll give you a perfect example. There is an advisory firm, national firm. Many people use them. They're very well known and common. Um, When someone comes in and says that's who they're working with, we have a game that we play. And it's called the Can I Guess Your Investments game. And if we've seen enough of those accounts in the last six months, we can generally guess what people have in their accounts because this firm, national firm, has arrangements many times with mutual fund companies where they get a better payout if they have a number of people in those funds. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the funds. They're well-known funds. They're probably good producing funds. The fact of the matter is though, everyone or a lot of their clients go into those same fund families. They might as well work for those fund families. They're not getting true benefit of independence as a client. Right. I think the other thing that um, that the uh, client also doesn't see is the different... Uh, the the different atmosphere of working in a captive company and working in an independent company, because the captive company is more like your old time, maybe nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties. There's like a sales manager. There's there's quotas. There's pressure being put Morning on for meetings production. To talk about what products need to go. Right, right, and and you know if a, if a person isn't you know isn't closing enough deals in a certain amount of time. They're called into an office and they're given a little lecture and things like that. And, you know, that's, that's not what you want for your financial advisor. You don't want that person to be under pressure to get you to sign and, and, and hook up on something. You want somebody who is, has the ability to kind of step back and say, okay, what's best for this person? I don't, I don't have to worry about having to sign this person to the bottom line or I'm going to lose my contract to keep working here. And, and, and one of the things that you'll see in those type of companies is a lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if that's something you're noticing at at a place that you're going to that, you know, or even that you're currently working with, or you're currently working with where, where, you know, 40 or 50% of the advisors are turning over every year then that's probably the type of environment that they're working in. And you might want to consider looking at a different type of environment for your accounts. I think another thing that you can do that's a really good kind of check on, and this is something anyone can do. We all carry smartphones in our pocket, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now, I'm not saying that what you get in this search you should follow, okay? But this is an easy way to put the financial professional on the spot a little bit. And how they react probably tells you more than what comes out of their mouth, okay? But if they recommend a particular portfolio, I would ask, you should ask, would you say this is a growth-oriented portfolio? Is this a income-motivated portfolio? Like, how would you describe it? So let's say they say, well, it's growth, okay? Mm -hmm. Pull out your little handy-dandy smartphone you got in your hand. Type in the words top growth funds, top growth investments, okay? It doesn't even matter what comes up, okay? I'm not saying that what comes up is better. But what you simply do is you say, you know, according to Google, these five are listed as the top ones. Why are what you recommending to me, why is what you're recommending to me better than any of these five? And why is that not listed on here? I'm not saying what you pulled up on Google is right, Mm -hmm. but it at least puts a little fire under the feet of why are you recommending this? Why are you not recommending any of these? Hey, this one's cheaper. Why is this one not being recommended? It's cheaper. According to this website, it's one of the best ones out there and it's half the price of what you're recommending me. You know, again, not that it's true because... I, I don't know. I mean, I looked at it for three seconds on Google. I don't even right. know who's recommending it. But my question would be, how does the person you're talking to react when asked to justify their recommendation? That will tell you a lot about mm-hmm. that person going forward. All right, coming up, we talked a lot about taxes last week. Interesting article came out in Detroit Free Press talking about why taxes are not easier to file than they are and it may shock you well i don't know it may not shock you at all congress is basically uh, the reason so we'll talk about that coming up next right here on the keeping your money show is your 401k sturdy enough to help support your retirement goals the keeping your money show has a team of advisors that will help you size up the assets currently in your 401k and explore asset allocation based on your goals call the keeping your money show today at 1-888-98-MONEY or visit keepingyourmoney.com to learn how you can start solidifying your foundation for a strong retirement plan